Jay Jax, how are you, bro? Welcome back to America. Good well, timing by you, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Just wanted to come back to see uh, LeBron play against the Bobcats. Easy. All right. When, at what point did you realize this was something a little bit different in all the games you've covered with LeBron? Yeah. Down through the years here. This one was different. Why? Uh, just, you know every time Dwayne's out that, he, that either he or Chris is going to do something extra. You can't sit there and say you're going to expect a 61. But in the third quarter when he's rolling, I, I, I pick up the, uh, my microphone, which is still on for the truck but off for air, and I uh, said, I want 50. I mean, it's another Monday. We got a back to back. Nobody wants to get on a plane and fly to Texas. Since we're here, let's do it. Give me 50. <laughs> And uh, Stephanie Reddy, who does the very same job for the Bobcats, we came into these jobs at the same time 10 years ago, uh, and, and she was a coach and a player, uh, was not, not pleased. Because this is what the Bobcats have really cleaned their act up and put themselves in playoff contention because of their defense just now yesterday. Well, the last three games where sc- somebody scored at least 55 have come against the Charlotte Bobcats. She did bring that up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And my only concern was, because of the separation in the game and the way that I've come to know Coach Spolstra, that LeBron wouldn't play much in the fourth quarter, and therefore maybe my my own desires uh, my, as, as a reporter and someone covering the team to see something special. Because LeBron had never had a 50-point game, Dan, at, at home for either franchise. Okay, but who makes the decision in the fourth quarter? Well, according to according to Mr. Bosch, post game in studio, that there wasn't even a, a, a question that they, that everyone knew what was going on, and there was enough separation in the game to let LeBron have the opportunity. But they were already thinking sixty yeah. as a group yeah. uh, of players, and so I think Spo allowed for what sometimes NBA coaches step away from fun within the game. It's not well, the, fun for them. But the only thing I, I was concerned about is you're, you're playing Houston tonight. So you had back-to-backs, and mm-hmm. LeBron looks spent. I don't know if Wade's going to play tonight. but and, and I Granted, it's regular season, but I didn't know if that would factor in at all because Charlotte did keep coming back to make it at least a little bit interesting. But is Wade playing tonight? I would imagine so. That's the way this this maintenance program, as it's termed, uh, <laughs> in the facility, pacing, has gone. Pacing uh, themselves, and, exactly, uh, and rightfully so. I mean, it just he's thirty one now. Uh, he had that Ossetron knee tr- treatment in the preseason to get himself in position to be able to play as many games, and I guess it'll end up probably being somewhere between. I don't know, 59, 62, somewhere in that range when it's all said and done, to, to, to be at your best at this point in your career when you get past tax day, which is but the point. How much of this of LeBron's future is predicated on Dwayne Wade? I would imagine it's a, a major piece of the pie. The one thing I do know is that LeBron at this stage in his career is going to make, even when he's trying to score 61, he's still going to make the best basketball decision. I mean, he kicked one off to, to, to Michael Beasley to knock down for three, and he missed it in that run late when he was trying to get over the uh, the 60 hump. And, and I look at that as just kind of a microcosm of what he will do. And if Dwayne is in a position, and I think this is a fine position, by the way, for, for Heat fans that are probably biting their nails right now, uh, that if Dwayne, who's still one of the top players in the game when he is healthy and on the floor, uh, as long as they maintain this type of health management, if you will, that he'll be satisfied with that, and that will be helpful in the decision-making process. Now, if another team presents themselves in a better spot for winning more championships, then that team will have a chance, too. Do you ever see a scenario where he goes back to Cleveland? I've always said to the people that, uh, that that still cuss me out because of the early part of my childhood I spent in Cleveland and my uh, con- connection with the Heat. That I do think he'll go back. It just may not be when you want it to. I mean, I think at some point, if if, if this was a fair tale, Dan, he would buy the team. <laughs> that would be the thing that he'd do. At the end. By the way, he's going back oh, on Saturday Ilgoskis. for Big Z's yeah. retirement. I mean, so there, there's going to be a lot of love in the room. I'm going to tell you that right now. Now, is it, there, there are mixed reports, though, if he's going to be able. I know there's a there's practice on Saturday, but he's planning on being in Cleveland for. Uh... It's a short flight from Chicago to Cleveland. Okay. It's okay. I think he could probably make the drive. So you're there. reporting that he's in. I am reporting that wow. that is the plan. Okay, so Jason Jackson and media reports. Sources close to yeah, the program. Yeah, sources close to the program. <laughs>
Um, I was also bringing this up that LeBron doesn't have that gene in his DNA like Jordan and Kobe do when it comes to scoring or Carmelo or even Durant. If you said he could have a triple-double and they win or he would have a game like last night, knowing who he is and his personality, what would he take? No, the win is the predication every single time. It's, it's if the whatever's tied to it. So it could be a triple double. It could just be eleven points. It could be sixty points. That is the authentic part of him that floors me sometimes. But he's more like Magic than Michael. Totally. And, totally. And I because he could get he could lead the league in scoring if he wanted to. Oh well, look, he's an NFL tight end playing small forward. He could do whatever he wants. Yeah. In the league, but I think just it's always been a part of it. I mean, even back when we were crowning him when he was a sophomore in Akron, Ohio, uh, that even then I think it was being developed in him that, that that you have to be complete in all aspects if you're going to be a champion. Well, you're a champion. I do what I can, man. Mm-hmm. I'm just you know what I am. I'm a carnival barker. Are you? That's what. Step right up. Get in the tent. Give me a nickel. Are you a cheerleader? No, I don't think so, Dan. Have you asked? Are you trying to mess with my money right now? Maybe a little bit. I got my mind on my money. (laughs) Uh, Can you? (laughs) I'm the whitest guy in the room. (laughs) You know, earlier you sounded like a grumpy old man. We were talking about worrying about the next night rather than staying in the moment. And then right then, (laughs) you just you still got it, baby. You're right in the middle. How's my street cred, though? Ah, here's what I'm going to do for you. Oh, God. You come on down to Miami. Yeah. We're going to go to Historic Overtown and find out. Oh, no. Huh. <laughs> it's all good. Am I big? Uh, am I big in that community? You're swole. <laughs> yeah, I'm swole. Get your swole on. Yeah. <laughs> they, they won't throw some shade on me. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you keep it towing it, don't you? Oh, yeah. I'm keeping it real. I'm yeah. keeping it real. I was yeah. trying to reenact when we played hoops at ESPN. Oh, boy. When when Stuart Scott was guarding me, and I'm yelling at him, where do you want me to score on you? You were LeBron before LeBron. No, I think I was Jordan or Kobe mindset wise. You might have been a little more Kobe. Oh, I was. Uh, when Kobe what? went for eighty. Okay, how possessed was I that that day when we played? And I guess you're screaming <laughs> as you're backpedaling. I was so. Where do you want me to score? I was you? so angry because I remember looking around going. Are there people in the stands? <laughs> I was so angry that, that day. Because what did I tell you? I'll go play. I just want to sweat. Nobody, right. Nobody's going to be checking me, d me up. And then Stewart picked me up full court. Well, he was serious, too. And then, serious. I mean, headband goggles. Oh, yeah, he had it all going on. He had Jordan, he, he was Air Jordan. Was Brand Jordan. <laughs> Jordan. He, he was Air Jordan from head to toe. And then I, he kept like you know forearming me and like he was really playing hard. And then I finally just said, "You were remember you were on the low post." I said, "Get the hell out of there! Get out of there. Like, You're not I'm, hitting the ball. <laughs> Get back on D." Not <laughs> real. Back when there were only twenty three anchors on the mothership's roster. Yeah, it was a mothership pickup game. And I tell J Jax, he's down on the post like he's like he's uh, you know M- Kevin McHale posting up. I'm like, get the hell out of here. Ceiling Feldman off. I had him. Yeah. Dave Feldman. Feldman locked on my pocket. Larry Beal and John Butchergrass. But I remember saying to Stuart Scott, "Where do you want me to score on you?" And he uh. didn't say anything. I go, "Where do you want me to score on no, you?" You were saying it. You were screaming. I know. I was. I know. It was, bad. was bad. It was bad. And I did score on him. How did that take over the LeBron 61? How did that happen? I know the feeling. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I messed around and had a triple-double that day. Oh, you are. You're a superstar. Uh, tell your wife I said hello and uh, safe travels. Stay black. Booyah! Bro.